That's a yummy nut. That's yummy yogurt. That is yummy. Hey everyone, welcome to the Vegan Good Life with Miyoko. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make your very own homemade vegan yogurt out of plant milk. And I've got three different kinds that I'm gonna show you depending on what you want in terms of nutrition, viscosity, ingredients, allergies, etc. In fact, you can make plant milk yogurt out of almost any kind of plant milk, whether it's a seed or a nut or coconuts, you just have to know the tips and tricks. You have to know what's important. What is the magic behind turning milk into a thick, delicious yogurt? So we're gonna talk about all that. Today we're gonna to make a yogurt out of oat milk and cashew milk. We're gonna make one out of coconut milk and cashew milk. And we're gonna make a third one out of pumpkin seed and oats. That's really high in protein as well. Super simple, super low tech, super cost effective. So let's get started. We're gonna get started with oat cashew yogurt. Now oats are fantastic for yogurt because what you'll notice in plant milk yogurts is that they're kind of runny, they're kind of thin, and oftentimes manufacturers have to add starches like tapioca or they have to add saturated fats like coconut oil in order to get the product to solidify and have some viscosity. The wonderful thing about oats is that they're full of something called beta-glucans, which is basically a starch that kind of gets stretchy and thick. So we're gonna utilize that starch in order to create the viscosity for this yogurt. Now, why are we adding cashews? I like things a little bit on the richer side. So the cashews play that role in adding richness and mouthfeel to this yogurt. If you have a cashew allergy, you can make this yogurt completely without the cashews, just with the oat milk. So if you want to do that, skip the cashew part, just proceed with the oat milk that we're going to make. Okay, so let's get started with the oat milk. Now, you can't just use a commercial oat milk because there aren't enough oats in it. We're going to make a super rich oat milk full of oats, which will allow the oat milk to thicken when we heat it. So we're going to start out with one cup of rolled oats. It goes into my blender and I've got a quart of water. It's not exact. If you're off by an ounce or two, no problema. So we're gonna put that in there and we're gonna start out by making the oat milk. Let's turn the blender on and we're gonna let it go. This is a high-speed blender. We're gonna let it go for at least a minute to make sure it's nice and creamy. All right, that's about 60 seconds. I've got this nice creamy oat milk right in here. However, did I just spill some? I think I did, okay. <laughs> However, it's a little too starchy. So we wanna remove the sort of, the most fibrous part of the oat milk. So I've got a nut milk bag here, it's just a muslin bag. Uh, they're available anywhere pretty much in a lot of natural food stores as well as uh, online. See, okay, um, you know what works really well? is if you get something that's narrow, so you can just kind of gather your, uh, the bag over something so you're not having trouble filling it. And we're just gonna remove the starchiest, sort of most fibrous part. Um, I'm gonna, just to make it easier to squeeze, I'm gonna put it over the, the bowl. When I was a little kid, uh, I think we went to a farm and uh, we were shown how to milk a cow and, the, and they show you how to pull down on the, on the teats and it's kind of the same process so we're milking oats here all right so same technique and we're not going to get a lot of pulp left we're going to get I don't know maybe three or four tablespoons um, hey you can just mix that into a soup or into your oatmeal, your regular oatmeal. You can make crackers out of it. In fact, I'm gonna gather all the pulp from all the milks that we're gonna to make today in our different yogurts, and then I'm gonna make crackers out of it. That'll be on a different episode. Okay, so as you can see, it's getting kind of goopy. Nothing more is coming out. All right, let me grab a bowl. We're gonna put the milk back into my blender Let's see if I can do that without spilling. And now we're gonna add 
three quarters cup of cashews. Now, as I said before, if you just want straight oat milk yogurt without cashews, then omit this step. But if you want it a little richer the way I like it, do this. If you don't have a high speed blender, you might want to soak your cashews in cold water for eight hours or overnight prior to blending so you can make sure that you get them nice and creamy. Once again, we're going to blend for about 60 seconds until the cashews are completely smooth and creamy. Okay, so now we're ready to heat this up. I'm going to pour this into a pot. Now, why are we heating it up? We're heating it up because we want to kill any potential contamination, any bacteria that could grow uh, in a warm environment. And that's the thing about fermentation is that you want to make sure that you're providing the ideal situation, the ideal ambient temperature and level of cleanliness to encourage the right bacteria to grow and to make sure that the wrong stuff doesn't grow. So that's why we're heating it up. This is partly the process called pasteurization, uh, where we're heating up something to at least 160 degrees for at least 15 seconds. Uh, and you just never know what's hanging around in your oats or your cashews. I've seen tests where they're, they're highly contaminated, so you just want to make sure that you do this step before you make your yogurt. Now, I've had success without doing it, but then I've also had times when my yogurt just didn't turn out or my cheese didn't turn out because something else that I didn't want grew in it. So, okay, so we're going to heat this up. It's going to take a few minutes, and you're going to see a textural change. It's going to go from this, this thin milk to something really goopy, gloopy, goopy, which is it? I don't, is it gloopy or goopy? I can't remember, <laughs> whatever. It's gonna get nice and thick. It's gonna have a lot of viscosity and mouthfeel, which will contribute to the thickness of the yogurt. So it's just gonna take a couple of minutes. We'll just uh, be patient. Okay, this is the texture that cookbooks used to say coats the back of a wooden spoon. I remember reading that in uh, The Joy of Cooking. Cook your bechamel sauce until it coats the back of a wooden spoon. All right, so now, as you can see, it's getting really lovely and thick. We'll take the temperature and just see where we are. Almost 160, and we want to get to 160 and then hold it for about 15 seconds. You don't have to have a thermometer. You can just cook it until it starts to boil and then and then you're good. You know, if you start seeing bubbles, then you're probably good. Ooh, it's getting so thick. Look at that. All right, I bet that's ready. Just gonna double check. There we go. Okay, hold that for 15 seconds. And now it's ready to cool. Okay, so here's the other trick about yogurt. Yogurt ferments at between 100 and 110 degrees Fahrenheit. So, that means this is too hot to introduce a bacteria. It'll kill the bacteria, the healthy bacteria that we want, the yogurt cultures. So we have to cool this down. You can do it two ways. You can pour it in the vessel that you're gonna be culturing it in, and then just stick it in the freezer and stir it every few minutes until it cools down to the right temperature. Or you can do it the fast way, which is what we're gonna do. And I'm gonna pour it back into this bowl. I should have rinsed that bowl first, but but I didn't, just pretend I did. And we're gonna put this into a larger bowl full of ice water and stir it so that the temperature comes down to 110 very quickly. We're down to 105, something like that. So that was fast, maybe five minutes. Carefully take it out of there. Now we're ready to add the culture. Now, what does that mean? We're gonna be adding yogurt culture, which is a combination of Acidophilus, bifidus, and thermophilus. There's, I, I think there is by law, I can't remember, something like five or six different bacterial varieties that have to be in yogurt culture. So we're gonna be adding that. Now, you can do it two ways. You can either just have your last batch of yogurt, and if this is your first time making it, you can start with a commercial plant milk yogurt. So you can just go buy another brand, and that can be your yogurt culture. If you do that, you're gonna just take about two tablespoons and just stir it in there. So if you do that, you can just keep repeating. 
just reusing your last batch of yogurt always to make a fresh batch. And you just need about two tablespoons of some kind of yogurt for a batch of fresh yogurt. If you want, you can also buy a, a culture. You can buy a yogurt culture. This one is called, is it Vegert or a Vegert? <laughs> yogurt, so I guess it's Vegert, all right? And I got this at a website called the thecheesemaker.com. They have all kinds of plant milk cultures or cultures for plant milks. So you'd want to add about an eighth of a teaspoon, quarter teaspoon of this right into here and just mix it in there. I'm going to just use the yogurt I made yesterday. Look how thick that is. Right in here. Okay. All right. So now we're going to pour it into a clean jar. Now you don't necessarily have to sterilize it, but you want to make sure it's really clean. So wash it well right before you use it. Now, all this talk about uh, the wrong bacteria growing and sterilization and pasteurization may get you kind of leery of, oh my God, can I actually execute this? Now you have to remember, yogurt's been made for thousands of years in less than pristine conditions. So yes, it is possible. In fact, I learned how to make yogurt when I was 20 years old, when I was in Egypt and I was staying with some friends in Cairo and they had an Egyptian cook who showed me how to make yogurt. Now I was vegetarian, I wasn't vegan at the time. And so this was uh, cow's milk yogurt. I guess it was cow's milk yogurt. And the way he did it was exactly how I'm showing you now. He pasteurized it, let it cool. He didn't have a thermometer. So the way he checked the right temperature was putting a little drop right on his wrist. This is how moms check the bottles of milk before they give it to their kids. It should feel slightly warm, but not hot. So it's an exact, it's not an exact temperature. It doesn't have to be exactly 110. It can be 105. It can be 112. It's not the end of the world. Okay. So that you don't need all of this ultra modern technological, uh, all these technological devices in order to get your yogurt to succeed. I mean, back in the day when I learned how to make yogurt in Egypt, the cook, did not have a yogurt maker. He didn't have any electric devices that would keep the temperature consistently at 110 degrees. He took this jar and then he took a thick towel, actually a couple of them, and he wrapped the jars like this and he just left it on the counter for six to eight hours until it turned into yogurt. So. Hello to technology. I love technology. Let me show you something that I love. Okay, this is a handy dandy yogurt maker I got on Amazon. I think it was $15.99. And it keeps one temperature, 110. That's it. And you can just set the hours, set it and forget it, as they say. So it, you can set it for eight hours or six hours or whatever, and, and there you go. Um, so you can get something like this. Or you can do the old fashioned Egyptian way if you have a warm kitchen, a warm corner. A uh, puffy jacket works well, a big blanket works well. You can just wrap it and just put it somewhere where it's gonna stay warm for six to eight hours until you get that desired tanginess that you want. And that's the wonderful thing about making your own yogurt is you can control the level of tanginess. I remember back when I was young, in my teenage days, I loved yogurt. And all the yogurts back then were super, super tangy. And so it was wonderful with some fresh fruit, a little drizzle of honey or some jam. I absolutely loved it. And then yogurts became sweeter and sweeter and sweeter and less and less tangy. So this allows you to control the level of tanginess that's perfect for your tastes. Another way to keep this warm is to put it in a low oven for six to eight hours. So I've got my oven set to 110 degrees. I'm gonna stick it in there. The next yogurt I'm gonna show you how to make is a really rich one from coconuts and cashews. I'm gonna show you how to make your own coconut milk. If you wanna start out with a can of coconut milk, you can do that too. But I just happen to have a lot of shredded coconut, flake coconut on hand. I needed to use them up before they uh, kind of expired. So I'm starting out with that. I've got two cups of 
either shredded or actually it's a combination of shredded and flake, but it can be one or the other. I got four cups of water. I'm going to start out by making coconut milk. Once again, we're going to strain this and get rid of the pulp. We don't want gritty yogurt. So now we're milking coconuts. All right, so now I got about four cups of coconut milk. And to this, I'm gonna add my cashews. I've got about three quarters cup of cashews. We're gonna blend that again until it's creamy, and then we're gonna reheat it just like we did before. All right, we're gonna heat our milk until it comes to a boil. Now, the difference between this and the oat cashew yogurt I made earlier is that we don't have a lot of starches in here to really thicken it up and get it goopy. What happens with dairy milk going from milk to yogurt is that it's all the fats and the proteins that are activated to thicken that yogurt. So we've got a similar situation going on here. We got a high fat milk, which is gonna help lend to the viscosity of the yogurt. So that's the coconut cashew yogurt, very, very rich. It's nice, nice and thick. I made it pretty tangy too. It's really rich, it's really tangy. Mm, that's good. Okay, so we're gonna heat this up until it comes to a boil. Occasionally, you can over blend something where you get a lot of foam because the blender incorporates too much air. And then you get this situation here, which is what I did. It's, it's good to show how we all make mistakes in the kitchen. Um, and so if you notice that there's a lot of air, a lot of bubbles in your blender, just kind of let the milk settle down uh, and the bubbles separate. You can remove the bubbles before you do this or you have the situation that I've got right now where the pot runneth over. This calming down, I'm gonna pour this into my bowl. Okay, it's at 110 degrees. It's just perfect. If you don't have a thermometer, you can always do the wrist test, just like you do for a baby's bottle. Warm, but not hot. Okay, I'm gonna culture this one with some starter culture, the Vigor that I, I spoke about earlier. So I'm gonna add a little less than a quarter teaspoon, sprinkle that in there. You can always use your previous batch of yogurt or a commercial vegan yogurt, as I mentioned before. And that's all you have to do. And then we're gonna put this in a warm place. This time, I'm gonna put it in the oven. Into the oven they go. The final yogurt I'm gonna make is allergen free. It's made out of pumpkin seed milk and oat milk. So we're gonna add a cup of raw pumpkin seeds to four cups of water and a half a cup of rolled oats. Now this yogurt is gonna have a tinge of green, sort of like that uh, pumpkin seed tofu that's out called pumfu. Okay, we're gonna strain it again through our nut milk bag. And you're gonna get quite a bit of pulp with this one. And that pulp is so great for making crackers. All you have to do is add a little bit of a little olive oil, a little flour, either gluten-free or regular flour, a little salt, any seasoning you like. Roll it out really thin and then bake it. And it makes a great high protein cracker. I mean, who says you can't milk plants, right? You can milk an almond, you can milk oats, you can milk pumpkin seeds, you can milk any plant. We're gonna milk it for all we can. Okay, once again, we're gonna heat this. Okay, it's beginning to get a little thick. Now, there are YouTube videos out there now that show you how to make your own pumpkin seed tofu because pumpkin seed milk, when heated, coagulates on its own and then you can separate the curds from whey, 
press the, the curds, and then you've got pumpkin seed tofu. Um, however, if you add oats to it, it prevents the curdling effect, and it just creates a nice, thick consistency. The perfect viscosity for yogurt. Okay, it's bubbling away beautifully, and that's what I'm talking about. A perfect viscosity for yogurt. Okay, we're gonna quickly cool it down again, but remember, if you wanna bypass this step, you can always just pour it into the jar that you're gonna be culturing the yogurt in, and stick it in the freezer or the refrigerator and just stir it every now and then until it reaches 110 or below. My, my milk is down to 110 degrees. I'm ready to culture it now. And as I mentioned before, you can use uh, commercially available vegan culture, yogurt culture, or you can just use your last batch of yogurt. So this is actually uh, pumpkin oat yogurt I made yesterday. It hasn't been chilled yet. It's gonna thicken up more as it chills, uh, but I'm gonna use that as my culturing. And as you can already see, there's a difference in viscosity between this and this very warm yogurt that just came out of uh, the oven. Mm. All right, so now something I forgot to mention all this time is you can sweeten these yogurts. So if you want to add a little bit of sweetener before you culture, that's fine. Now, those sugars are going to be food for the bacteria to grow, and they'll grow faster, in fact. Now, the oats provide nutrition for the bacteria. Uh, the cashews provide nutrition for the bacteria. Uh, pumpkins, pumpkin seed milk itself is relatively low in sugars and starch, and so they don't have enough bacteria, which is why you've added oats to that. Not bacteria, they don't have enough sugar for the bacteria. Uh, and so that's why we've added a little bit of oats to that, makes it better. Uh, but if you want a sweet yogurt, go ahead and add a little bit of maple syrup, a little agave, you know, even sugar, whatever you want. Okay, this just gets plugged in uh, and set for about eight hours. And eight hours later, you'll have yogurt. Now remember, the tips for making yogurt, it's all about temperature. Pasteurize your milk first, get it down to 110 degrees, and then keep it at about 110 degrees for six to eight hours until it's gotten to the level of tanginess you want. That's the trick to making great yogurt. My three yogurts are done. Let me just show you the difference. Look how thick that is. This is the, uh, the oat milk with cashews. All right, now we're gonna go to the uh, coconut milk and cashews, that is also lovely and thick. Look at that. That one's really tangy too because I let it ferment extra long. And finally, I've got the pumpkin oat yogurt which isn't chilled yet, it's still thick. It's gonna get thicker in the refrigerator. This one, uh, I just finished taking out of the oven. So, that's what you got, folks. Three different yogurts from three different kinds of plant milk. So let's go share some food. It ain't the good life if you're not sharing with your friends, so. Oh yes, I know, isn't that yogurt so yummy? I made it, I made it. You like that, Rufus? So yummy. Always make enough food to share with all your friends, human and non-human. Uh-oh, Angel's coming over here. I don't know if Angel will, Angel, you know what? There's no milk from a cow in my yogurt. No, I made it in a compassionate way. That's a yummy nut. That's yummy yogurt. That is yummy. <laughs> Look at that. Your face is so messy now. Mwah. Mwah. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. What is this? What is this, guys? Share. That's what community is about. It's about sharing. Sharing is caring. Do you know that? This is the vegan good life with the yogurt. out my Instagram for the video on how to make fun, delicious crackers. <laughs>